folks to the Dell Futurist Community Cup. Day 3, Map 2 is getting underway. Sanhok, after another small shuffle in the middle of the pack of the leaderboard, as we saw some promising teams crash out early on and some contenders rise up the ladder. I'm your host, Cap Nare, with me, Kiran Shades there, Nujibail, and Nikhil SK Brutality. Guys, walk us through the scores after Map 1 of Day 3. And uh, we don't really... Yeah, so Danny is yes, still holding on to that lead. You know, it's narrowed down from that 200 odd points, but he is sitting strong at first place with 1,010 points. So he's crossed the 1,000 mark with RPs again with that big win uh, catching up, and he's he's in second place with 900. Then we have Sick Warrior with that unfortunate DC, but still, you know, 855 anybody's game. This this map is going to be hella close, and we know what sort of a uh, you know circumstances that these top teams have had in Sanok, some going out super early, some going out like to teams that they, they were, you know, surprised that even were contenders. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. These top three teams are where it's at. That's what I see it. And then obviously following up with LXG2, the consistent top five guys, they have 830 points. Again, yet to close a the game. Then there's Zone One, still you know staying strong with 700. Uh, followed by Wiki Rex. What? It all depends uh, on actually this match, right? For yeah. for the likes of Sick Warrior, LXG Zone, Wiki Rex, Hydra Flick, Google X God, and even Rotti, all the way down to ninth place. If they can close out a win on this map right now, they can actually put up a good fight tomorrow and be in contention for the top two spots. And that, in fact, is what Dell Futurist is all about enabling new age careers, allowing these young folks to follow their passions like gaming, streaming, make them into careers. And so many of these guys doing great and making a name for themselves. Let's jump straight into game as Accelerate has already been taken down there by someone from, I think, Squad 17. If yeah. I, yeah, Hydra Flick. Hydra Flick runs past, gets the first kill, and that is a huge blow for uh, the squad of Danny S yes. and Co. Yes, the leaders there lose one player early on in Paradise as uh, Team IR were able to flush him out. We've got eventually. three squads here, by the way, three streamers. We've got Hydra Flick, we got Danny S, and we got Robo. And Roy takes down Robo. We got Brickster the here. Brickster is actually trying to try and peek Roy, but uh, then we have Void. No helmet. Is actually gonna. Is he gonna peek Roy? Yeah, he nope. did. He did. <laughs> really bad spray coming in there from uh, Roy, but Brickster is hell bent on peaking uh, Roy again. So three squads in Paradise, and uh, you know Robo is basically playing spoil spot, even though he went down early right there. Uh, we see Sadie Boy coming with a flank on Brickster. Is Brickster gonna spot him out? Yeah, yep. both of them have pretty much a similar read coming in there. Roy's also going for the flank. He just barely spots out his helmet there in the corner, but they're already in position. Brickster taking in so much damage early on. 48 HP is looking to retreat back, but this is the time for Danny's to actually push through. Brickster caught in two mines there. They're going to double beak him up. Brickster ends up getting knocked and immediately flushed out. I think and that's squad gone, number 15 yeah. is going to be the first team eliminated from the server here on Sanok. That is extremely disappointing for Robo and Brickster that they would have been hoping to, you know, do better this game around. They've they've done okay Shan Sanhog in the previous two days. And I think it's now just we got Saunisra here. He's gonna take down Wimmel, but it's a four four V one and they're just gonna finish team number nine gonna finish Saumitra down. And just in the distance, we see Amrul as well. Is yeah, Amrul is yeah. right behind. He's walking to them. He's seen Bimal, Bimal go down. I think he doesn't realize the Sahil's on the left spotted him. No, they nearly miss each other. Why is he looting? That's what I want to know. He's, he's actually mm. looting. I think it's because okay. he's scared he doesn't have enough for a fight. And he just leaves. Uh, <laughs> Amrul? <laughs> I mean, we, we, we spoke about having that discipline of playing for the position rather yeah. than one kill, but I think it was a bit silly that he went for, say, that one fight, uh, I mean, one bit of loot, and then came back. Looking at uh, Paradise right now, we had, in fact, IR as well as Danny S drop Paradise for the third ta consecutive time here on Sanhok. It has always been, in fact, IR that eventually moves out and moves southern towards boot camp. This time, IR, they change their fortunes, they get that I one think kill early on. Yeah, it's smart because they realize there's a third squad there. Yeah. And they decided, you know, it's too risky to fight uh, early on. We know how the PUBG servers work and gets. Uh, way better, way easier, the longer you yeah. survive. So nobody wanted to risk that early fight. They got the kills they wanted and they got out. 
and uh, the first circle does in fact move towards the southeastern side. I think this is the first time uh, in all the matches that you have witnessed, we see a circle that doesn't uh, really have even 50% of the squads already in yeah. it. So most of the times it's just been squads dropping, the circle dropping on top of them and they haven't really been made to move too far ahead as well to reposition. Yeah. So they've just had long drawn duels till those final few circles where they are eventually forced to reposition. Yeah, I think we're going to see some engagements here towards the north side of the circle close to Camp Bravo, uh, close to this intersection on the east of Boot Camp, right south of Paradise. That's where we're going to see all these teams from the north coming in and converging in these hills. And that's going to be very bad for the teams who are late to the party because it's much easier to spot somebody out when you're waiting and, up and on the map. Uh, look at this side, right? Joker from LXG2 is actually just about 50 meters from Arconics, but for some reason, Arconics hasn't even checked there. They landed well, there together. I, th I think that th he's behind that little mountain inside no, but the he's quarry, just right? just not gone and checked the quarry at all. And then finally, I think he's gonna take a look. Let's see if he's gonna spot Joker. And again, Joker with that sliver of vision gets away. Just look, you see it in the third person, right? He's, he's just there. Yeah. I think and it's, it's Arco just has a 4x on his sniper. And here's the thing. Now Arumulov going right between their squad to take a lot of damage. Gets knocked down by Johnny Walker, Joker's teammate in the distance. And that is disastrous from the man from Google X card. They were really counting on this guy. And insult to injury, gets punched to death by Johnny Walker. And they're actually getting pushed. Uh, the rest of, I think, Google X card getting pushed by the whole of Wikirex just on the other side of Cave. Uh, but it seems as though Gossi Boy is going to return to his team. Uh, but they are like right next to each other, right? Going to try and move to the center yeah. circle. They're going to fight. Uh, it all depends. Does Endeavor, do Endeavor and Google Art choose to go up or down? If they go up, they might actually flip this around and take uh, turn this into an advantage. And I think turning back to that qualified Joker, X, uh, Joker 007 does finally get taken down. Wikidex's squad has decided they're going to be going the other way, so that is crisis averted for them. Yeah, but they're moving straight towards that compound that is currently being held by uh, LXG uh, squad number two there. So regardless, this might just end up being a three-way standoff here coming up in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, because Ghostly Boy is going to be the first one, I think, who's going to uh, take shots or he's going to enter the compound first. Uh, checking seems as though he's looted, so he's not really spooked at the moment. Yeah, if we take a he's look a from above to give you an idea of the positioning, right? Google X God right there on the right side of the map. All of Wikidex squad very close to each other. And Johnny Walker and Nandy, they are alone. They've lost two of their teammates here, remember? If I'm not... No, they've lost one, just Joker. Viper XL, too far to be involved in this fight. Johnny Walker, it's all going to come down to whether he and Nandy make the most of whoever's going to walk into this house first. They have to be really quiet here. I'm Ghosty, but I'm not sure whether he knows there's somebody there. Nandy takes him out as he enters. And whoa, 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 is there a nade going in? And if they didn't know, now they definitely do. Oh, the nade Nandy goes taking out. the friendly fire damage there. Mab and Vades on the outside. And the small people there with the door, MAB, looks to spray away. There's Wikirex coming in with the loop around as well and he's going to reposition. Is that third party coming into play there as well? Wikirex, well aware there may be a player behind him at this point of time. There's the nades coming in as well. That is from Wiper XL. In fact, he just goes for the spray fight and Wikirex ends up whiffing that spray. Now Wiper XL able to get the knock and eventually... What? MAB? Oh yeah, that's MAB coming in for the trade there. And he will get the knock onto Johnny Walker. Wade's able to get that in and looks like they will go in for the flop eventually. Nandy now has lost all his teammates. He is going for the loop around. Looks like he's not done with this fight just yet. He gets spotted out by MAB. He sprouts down. Not the best of fights there. And LXG2, who are sitting nice and pretty there on position number four, are the first ones to bow out here in San Hawk. We talk about Sandhawk being the great equalizer, the one that gives every team just on the edge of the fray a chance to get in on the action, to make an improvement on their positioning. Let's, let's take that's a look. What what's, what's the map looking like right now? Yeah, so as I mentioned, all the teams, they're moving in from the north side and very close on this, you know, these barn hills, as I call them, just, uh, what do you call, southwest of Camp Bravo. And this is where we're going to see a lot of fights moving in over yeah. the next few seconds. There are a lot of squads that are clumped up towards that northern side of the circle. It, if that circle ends up shifting south, south 
there's going to be a lot of teams vying to move into the circle from a similar direction and we might just see fights break left, right and center. Third party is yeah. going to be a big problem yeah. for most Excellent of these teams. Excellent here actually taking shots yeah, it's there. A, on it's squad a one way four at the, at the moment uh, because he did take shots at team number nine, which is GG1. Uh, but the rest of his team is pushing uh, behind him. So I think Axelin is going to actually aggress on this situation. See if he can yeah. pick up some kills. Because they are on high ground, they're open. And there's just trees there to hide. Whereas this guy's got a bunch of buildings to uh, take cover with. Yeah, while that's happening, actually, Wikidex's squad has run into a bunch of problems here. As it's down to Vades and Man, uh, Mav as Vades goes down uh, early on in this fight to squad 18. Yeah, that's, that's Google, Google X, X God. God. This They've been, you know, sort of just trying to hang on to dear life. And now it is bad times that just map alone. I think Google X God might have spotted him out. Not quite over that half wall. He's waiting back there. And like once again, you know, this is another contender team, Wikirex, yeah. where he's on the verge of going out on 18th. This is pretty much, again, third party coming into play here. We expected it to be a three-way duel happening in these combos. That is an endeavor. He does get knocked down. Google X God, though, able to trade. MAB ends up going down. And that is going and to be Wikirex's let's swap Rex's to team. another fight. We see Trigger right in front of three people of Danny S's squad. Going to whiff a complete spray on Roy right there. And now Trigger is in trouble. Oh, he's not in trouble actually. Sunny Meister and Trigger take down two members of Danny S's team. This is our leader right now. Just Roy remaining. Same as the previous round. Is Roy going to Yeah, but look at third party up top. We got squad nine. That would be gaming grounds one coming into the fight as Bravo got taken down there by Dynamic Jot as he was looking to interfere. And is it once again down to Roy? Yeah, it is it's down, down to Roy, Roy and Trigger is hunting him down. He knows exactly where Roy is playing from here. Roy was very cheeky the last time around to get that beautiful finish for uh, Danny S and Co. This time he might not. I don't have think he's going to make it side. out. Both Sunny and Trigger hunting him from above. If you can take a look at this angle, there is nowhere to hide. If Sunny just looks to the left, oh, I think the spot him out. Roy is on a sliver of HP. Trigger going down for the up close finish. He's going to spot him out, and Danny S is out on 17th. What is happening? Well, the tables have turned this time again. We lose two of the top four early on here in this round. And the circle does move south so that if you haven't seen fights enough already, there's more coming your way. I think this is the perfect opportunity for Arps and Co. They've always been lingering around that middle of the score, the table board. And now is the time for them to actually take control and probably even the lead here at the end of San Ock today. Yep, here we've got Sick Warrior Squad. They're going to be actually going towards uh, Hydra Flick and they've got Cosmic YT on the left. We've seen Cosmic YT play Spoil Sport for a while. They would have heard Wheezy's shots up front there with the QBU. And that's going to mean they're going to be on high alert. They don't have too much time to make their way into the circle. And there's a good amount of squads between them. Hydra Flick Squad not really moving. They're standing still and fighting the second zone squad. That means Sick Warrior, Kakashi, Captain Pons and Adi will have a fairly decent time and whoa! LXG won with a wipe there on Zone 1. Yeah, yep. I think Zone 1 was in a vehicle and they just got completely wiped. They just lost Frost Pudge from behind which is, I think Dreadrex is actually pushing, pushing them from behind right now. And thanks to the uh, circle positioning as well, uh, pr pretty much every single time you get to see a quick start, a, a slightly slow passive middle stage. That's not going to be the case this time. There's just way too many teams clumped up right now outside the circle. Yeah. yeah. Apologies for the chaos, folks, if there is any, because there are fights every few seconds. And the excitement is just not going to stop. Cosmic Whitey's squad is going to finish off Vacuum. And that's going to mean Cold Zera knows exactly where they are. And he's going to take the fight. And Cruiser gets knocked down there. Uh, as we look to shift to Cold Zera in just a bit, this is not looking good for Cosmic Whitey's squad. As he himself is now pinned down. Yeah, and Cosmic Whitey has been spotted out as well. There is HK22 on the uh, far side trying to make a run for this Cold Zera. Unable to land those shots. And he had a 3x on him there. Projol though is going to look to push in. He's behind the enemy lines right now. Question is, will Cosmic Whitey and Co be aware of this? Meanwhile, Adi able to get the knock oh, in HK. HK. Spoil sport as Adi was trying to spray down Helium's car there. Uh, Cosmic and HK took care of Adi. MLG got knocked out of the car as Helium is not going to be stopping for anybody. 
and sick warrior and co's team continue to just not have the luck in their side their lady luck not smiling down on them and now Kakashi oh, he's going to be looking for some revenge in cosmic YT and spot. I think sick warriors DC'd again because he's out in the zone just AFK and here we go Kakashi two tap three tap on cosmic is he going to finish cosmic off because cosmic is behind the tree yeah, he does have cover for now, but then Kakashi immediately oh, knows he's Nate not going to have too much time. Nade coming in, long range. Is it going to connect? No, not going to matter as he does find him on the side there. Gets the knock in, but he, uh, HK, he's not spotted him just yet though, has he? I think he might have an inkling here, but he's getting shot now. Like that, he gets knocked down by HK. And now, Kakashi, does he have any sort of backup here? I don't think he has. Captain Pawns is just going to cut his losses and run away. And and for squad number 19, the troubles just seem to compound And here by we go. Second. HK is actually going to get Cosmic uh, rest up as well because he's got two first aids on him. He's got a load of bandages. I think it's Cosmic's going to come back. So this is six kills on Cosmic squad, even though they're a man down. I think that's huge, you know, coming in from the man. I mean, what a play this time around. And once again, you know, Sick Warrior squad running into trouble with Cosmic YT. Not what they would have been hoping for. Yeah, the, they're pretty much going to be touted as the giant killers of the country. Yeah. Being what they are right now, Cosmic IT will let's, get the heels yeah, in. Yeah, let's look at the zone. Let's look at the zone. For what the is, south, as of now, there's pretty much just squad number six, their Rotty Team 1, who are right. inside the circle. And there's squad number nine Yeah, as there's well. Team 5 Blitz on here. Snorlax is going to fight 1v4, take down two members. Uh, he's got the M24 and the AK on him. He's searching for Flash. Yeah, he's going to take on Flash, flash as well. This is LXG uh, yep. 1, right? Yeah. Yep. So it is a 1v4. They've lost two members. Now, like the only remaining member of Blitz Zone. So it is Cafe versus Cafe right now. Blitz Zone versus. Uh, LXG1 and I think Snorlax is going to move into the zone. He's just like, he's seen the 30 seconds. He's going to quietly move back into the zone and, you know, what's happening on the other side, Captain? Uh, so we actually just saw Google X God squad get eliminated there by Gaming Grounds 1 here in town. There was just the one man left alive and unfortunately he couldn't make it. But look at this. Cosmic YT once again right on the heels of Captain Pawns. Let's see if we can go find them. Yeah. Oh, it seems as though Sick Warrior is actually connected back, but then is it too late? Because if he doesn't find a vehicle, I don't think he can tank the next zone. Depends. He's got bandages. He's boosting up. Uh, I think he's going to try and sprint this. Oh, I think Cosmic Squad has run out of... This. These cats have run out of nine lives because they have been spotted out by Hydra Flick right behind them as Prajwal and Hydra himself. Come up big with their snipers. One body shot each because they did not have the health. And Captain after Pons has no idea, circle. but he's running straight into Sunny Meister. I think he hurt Sunny Meister in the house. Is yeah, Sunny going to spot him out? He would have nope. for sure hurt him. There's dynamic jut as well. That's completely locked down here by squad number 13. This and compound. the worst part is Captain Pons cannot go anywhere else yeah, because he's, he's already straight open. towards Blade now. Yeah, Blade, Blade thankfully on its own. It's going to be a one by one uh, one on one fight. All comes down to who's going to see whom first. We're already down to nine team folks. Nine uh, Blade, teams, 24 members. Doesn't seem like Blade heard him as well. Yeah, he's. but it's going to be Captain Pawns, Blade, Sunny Meister, as well as the squad that's coming in from, I think that's squad number 10, that's GG2, who are all going to be but in this. In the distance, I see Sick Warrior as well pushing in, so he's almost made it into the zone. Yeah, 13, they're, look, they're, they're hot on the heels and of Captain he's Pons. sliding right now. Yeah, I think that Sick Warriors <laughs> just serve a potato in there for him, unfortunately. But he's making it to the zone, so... He's got 17 seconds. Has he DC'd? No, no, he's... No, 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 he's, no, no, he's, he's not, he's not, right. he's... He's just sliding, he's having a good time. He's very close to the zone, last first aid left. If he makes it, that's going to be nuts. So yeah. Captain Pons has actually found himself covered here. He's sharing the compound with Gaming Grounds 1. Uh, Sunny Meister moving in from the side with Sick Warrior hot on their heels. Oh, Sick Warrior spots out Dynamic Jet jumping in the distance, but he, he can't afford to take the shots. Really doing his 
anything. Yeah, the, if squad number nine now starts firing away, draws some of the attention away, this squad might oh just end God. up going so, down to sick warrior. He spots two players look, in his crosshair. Arconix is also there, very close though. He says the cross, he stands up at the wrong time. He gets knocked down as well, and now it's down to Trigger. Trigger gets spotted out in the open, but he turns around, gets the knock on to sick warrior, and Captain Pawns is gonna be nowhere in sight. Question comes now, it is a short sprint. Oh yeah, he gets cleaned up regardless there. And now Captain Pons is gonna be looking for some revenge here. He spots the players in the grass, lays in the shots. Long range, he will get the two kills. And meanwhile, Snorlax is the one to third party in and clean up a couple of kills himself. Yep, no squad wipe there as Sunny Meister was away from his squad in the shack and he still does have time for that revive onto Dynamic Jar. Now let's turn our attention to the rest of the map. Still nine teams, no teams wiped yet as Blaze is going to be moving in close towards Cold Zera. They're taking shots from I think squad 14 in the distance across the mountain. That's ARPS. They are going to be looking at capitalizing on the top teams going out early. Sit ends up knocking down Karaklanda. And Sahil, I think, is going to take that kill because he sees Karak in the distance but misses a shot on the Khan 98. Stationary target. There we go. 35 hit point. One more shot will do it. But, yep, I think it's gone. So Karak's gone. Say it unfortunately, knocking him down with the jet ski, I see, I think. And then we see Noob Forever. You're taking shots at Snorlax. Snorlax in the open. 18 hit points. Yep, on the hill there, he will run down and eventually he will make it into cover there. The smoke not really helping Wimmel end up cleaning up on that kill. He's up at the rock there, Snorlax. <clears throat> He's not gonna go for that peak just yet. He knows there's quite a bit of yeah, players just look staring at this down here. I think, I think Deeraz has been spotted out, if I'm not mistaken, or were those uh, you know, shots from afar? Because he's swimming right behind Sahil. Oh my god, Snorlax with a beautiful shot right there on Sahil. He's going to finish him off. Yeah, and Deeraz drowned because he took that much damage and he was underwater. He yeah. drowned. Snorlax on a rampage here, solo. Five kills for Blitzzone in the top 10 situation. Is he going to spot out Wimmer? Spots out Wimmer, but whiffs the shot. Yeah. Noob Forever not. Noob Forever smokes himself, effectively being useless in terms of covering his teammates. Snorlax has got enough time to heal up now. Yeah, he's managed to find himself nice little rock there for cover. And now let's see how he's going to take this forward. There are a couple of smokes he can use. He goes for the shot. I think that was one of the players. Noob Forever just barely making it into that building right there. There is Wimmel also waiting. So there might be a chance of a double peek here if Snorlax uh, decides to go ahead and push in for this head-on fight. Yeah, over on the other side, Sunny Maisha had a huge opportunity with a flank behind uh, Hydroflex squad, but unfortunately, he didn't quite spot them out and was spotted by Prajwal in return. And that's oh, going to be the Snorlax end of it. Snorlax again at the end. Whips the shot completely and Wimmel's Kappa takes down Snorlax. So Blitzone is out in uh, sixth place. Yep. yep, so folks, we've got five teams and 14 members alive. Three from Grotty's Den in Dehradun. Then we've got squad 14, that is Arps. Just Scourge left for him. Captain Pawns from Sick Warrior side. Then we've got two from the Gaming Grounds, one team. And last but not least, Hydra Flick and his squad. Three of them alive. Yeah, Who do you is, think is going to come out on is top? Is this going to be Hydra Flick's chance, right? Because, like, you know, we've just not kept an eye out on Apis, but he's back again in the top five situation. And he's just a hundred points away the last time we checked from Danny S. So I think we're going to have a new leader after uh, Definitely, day considering three. Considering yeah. Danny S has gone out on 17th position or 18th, uh, he's going to be getting maybe five or 10 points for that at best. So Scourge, if he can turn this top five into maybe a second place, that's going to be huge. Oh, not just Scourge. It's Scourge, Axelin and Hades. Boy, it's that's the a whole, whole team. squad. Oh my yeah. God. The whole team. They oh my God, camera angle. So that's what I saw. And then I turned down and I'm like, wait a minute. Surprise, <laughs> surprise, they're more of squad number 14 So they're there. definitely the favorites to take this home. Apologies for that. But can Rotties then play spoil sport for them? Does Anon Panda spot them out? He does. Hades plays, gets tapped. Is he going to go down? Ooh. He's missing quite a few shots there and Scourge gets spotted out for a second there as well. Guys, and let's let's not, you know, take our eyes off the fact that Captain Pons is actually still in the game. Yeah. And he's in the only he's compound. He's in the middle. Yeah. yeah, he's in the only compound. He's going to get pushed by IR in just a bit. Let's see if he's going to peek out or if he's going to play four position because 
The way I see it, Apis has a very favorable spot right now on high ground. They don't oh, have to take Dottie the fight. Oh, Dottie got taken down there by Vimal as he and Noob are securing their position in the circle. And that's going to be a big, big dent for Dottie's Den's hopes of making this one count. Yep, they did not have a good finish the last time. I think they finished 20th. This was their time to redeem that they had to get at least top two, but losing a player there, chances are looking slimmer and slimmer. Axelin in the far side, we do see him get the knock onto Prajwal, but IR replying back and more shots being fired here by Axelin. He does get the knock onto Hydro Flick there. Prajwal ends up getting flushed as well. He's taking shots now, 11 HP, looks to run back. Crypto left, right, left, right, just barely makes it back to safety. Yep, Axelin a bit too risky there from the open. Now Scourge trying to find Seth as Anon Panda is already down. Uh, they're going to be a bit annoyed about losing Karaklonda and getting themselves into this situation to begin with as Rotti's Den is in real trouble now. Scourge manages the body shot there. He needs just one more on stage to end them as Hades plays on the other side, cleaning up house with Wheezy leaving the game now. Hydra Flick squad, certainly from a very strong position, have seemingly handed the match to ARPS for this There's round. Hydra versus ARPS across that compound and all of this Captain Ponce is like, yup, you can please go ahead, shoot at each other, pretend like I'm not even here. Yep, nobody's actually gone near Captain Ponce as Cold Zera is the first one to venture into the compound. Is Captain Ponce going to be adventurous enough to go outside or is he happy camping? Brutes, what do you think is the way to go? I think he should camp it out because, you know, if Hydroflick takes out uh, some of our pieces and members and then Captain Pons ends up in a 1v1. I yeah. think he can clutch it. And plus, remember, right, if he gets a kill right now and gets knocked, that's five points. If he waits another position, that's another 10 points. Yep. And the circle is going to favor Captain Pons there. The, I, I was scared whether he the circle has just moved a little more just towards look at, the look south. Look at his but positioning, the right? He's literally in this house, like right there. And all of I like two members of IR and the whole of Axelin squad has to push down on him. So the only two people I see playing sport sport is are going to be Sate and Vimal Scarpa because just look at this circle right now. There's Vimal on the north side. There's Sate at the edge. But I think Apis knows that there's a player there. Yeah. Because Scotch didn't end up finishing Sate. So Captain yeah. Pons. He's I, looking. Yeah, is a very strong position. And I actually like what Hydra Flick's done too. He's he's not pushed towards the compound, but he's holding the side. Just in case someone flanks down on the side of the building, he because he just has to move a little and he has a ridge on him. And it, it all comes down to whether Wimmel's going to get up and move because, look, the whole of RP squad has to move down that hill. And guess what? There's no cover except that single rock we see here. I think the person in the most trouble right now is Sate. Yeah, he's at the edge. The circle's going to move the passes there. But there we go, Shark Beings uh, taken by Wimmel's Sate actually cover. uses the nade pixelation as a sort of smoke, but he's not going to get far as ARP's QBU is going to put him out of his misery. Down to four teams. Vimal still alive somehow, pushing in there on uh, Hydra and Cold Zera, but Cold Zera is going to be the first to react. Down to three teams. Captain Pons, Cold Zera and Hydra, and then all of ARP's squad. I think ARP's has got this, unless there's a major plot twist that I am unaware of, that the script has at the end. Here we I go, think Arps guys. Is, Arps is gonna enter the building that Captain Pons is, is in. And let's see if he's gonna check the room, because it all comes down to whether he's gonna check the room or not. Yep, we've got Captain Pons spotted on one side, Arps on the other. How is this going to end up, folks? Time for the final push yeah. here, Arps. He does have his teammate in the building as well. Captain Pons, at this point, I'm like, shh, shh. I can hear footsteps, man. There are people outside. There are people outside. How do I play this? He's just gonna sit inside, make. If you ask me, Captain no Bonds is in the wrong side of the room because him being here might force the door to open on the outside. I'm not quite sure. But he's just gonna let it third party right now as Arps decides to take this fight up against IR. That nade, is it gonna get the flush onto Cold Zero? The second one, most definitely shoot 54 points of damage. There you go, the cleanup comes in and now Hydroflick is gonna be left to his own devices there all alone. Back oh nade, cleans house, boy oh boy, Kobe in the house for the cleanup there. And now it's a four week one, Captain Pond cool as a cucumber has been sitting in that room but now time seems to be running out for him soon here yeah, I Captain. wouldn't want to be Captain Pons right now there we go I think Scott's got oh Scott's in the building but then he leaves he exits it's it's a game of hide and seek right now because Captain Pons isn't making a single movement because he's gonna wait for the zone to refresh and there we go I this think is Pons the zone. is still in 
He's gonna get. I think Bonds out. needs to go to the other corner of the room, and he's in. Oh yeah, he he does. He does. He can just sweep. Yeah, the he's in. in the same building, and th- there's more time. They're all spreading out right now. They're looking to see which corner if he's sneaking behind this rock, whether it's behind that tree, and if he <laughs> can. They're spike. spraying down every <laughs> bush they <laughs> see right now. This is hilarious, folks. But this is what Del Futurist is about. Giving these players from across the country to stand up and make a name for themselves to kickstart their esports and streaming careers as Captain Pons is taking Sick Warriors team forward all on his own. He's been alive for I think 15 yeah. positions now all on his own and it comes down to this folks. What an end to the third day, second yeah. map of Com- the Del Futures Community Cup. Com- I think this is gonna be wiped. the yeah, this is gonna be the third chicken dinner for Axel and there's no I mean, I mean, we said, we've, we've said that twice or thrice right now, SK, and we've always been wrong. It's always been the underdog who's I mean, won. Here's the question: Will, will Captain uh, Will Captain Pons repay Arps for that three v one clutch? Is it going to be a story of redemption yep. for Sick Warriors squad? I don't yeah. think so. Oh, look at, look at him edge forward. Yeah. <laughs> is that one of, he's like, yeah, yeah. It, he it, does it, not want now. to be heard. Yeah. Small baby steps. We start <laughs> right now. We're moving slightly. You see, we, we know that it's only two teams, right? Yeah. But yeah. Captain Pons has no idea. He sees the counter. He sees Fire Live. And he's hoping that there's there's some other team there. But <laughs> yeah, it is a 4v1. And after checking every single corner now, I'm pretty sure Shooting Pandas right now are like, hey, did everyone check these buildings? Did we check everything? Oh, yeah, he gets exactly spotted what out. They did. <laughs> <laughs> they finally find him, and how uh, fitting! It's gonna be Hades to get the second and chicken that's dinner a in huge a row. Chicken dinner because it's a ten kill chicken dinner. That's an extra fifty points in addition to the two hundred. That means Arps is hundred percent yeah. ahead of. Danny S. Yeah. At this point, we have a new leader. Yeah. What a turn of events, you know, Danny S. Two days, half a day of day <laughs> <Yeah>. three <laughs> as well, and then suddenly one bad man. One bad fight. And I think it was, that, on his head. it was that fight again. I, I don't get the the point of going paradise over and over again. You know you're gonna fight IR, but this time even Robo Squad got involved in. I, I don't get it. You know, it's it's not a pug. It's not it's not a pug match because yeah. it is placement over kills right now. And Exla Raid, the big star of that team. Goes down first, and it was a micro Uzi was I think Hydra's AK. Not, mm-hmm. not a chance. No armor. The AK is gonna shred unless you get like you know a six quick, shots. Yeah, yeah. six <laughs> shots with the Uzi or anything like that. But again, it's like the moment XLR8 goes down, I see this team struggle to the later stages and not be able to come out. So let's let's actually look at the bottom of the leaderboard. Yeah, let's have which will bottom. show you who all sort of disappointed this time around. Like 17th Danny S squad. I think they're going to get 20 points for this match. That 110 point lead has been eviscerated. It and is gone. Wiki Rex. Wiki Rex below him at LXG 1 yeah. at 19th. It's like what is going on? Th- this mean, is our top 4. Yeah, that's our top 4 in the bottom 4 right now. Yeah, that's, that's just not something they want. Again, Google look, look at Zone. Zone was Zone is in the top 6 or top 7 of the leaderboard as well. They, they ended 16th. Mm-hmm. Right? All the top teams. And then we see Cosmic again, consistent, consistent finishes. He's going to like move up on the leaderboard. ITGC in 10th. We've got the rest. We got Sunny Mice as well. They had a strong game. They wiped out our leaderboard guys and then ended up going down in uh, to Sick Warrior in that 1v3 scenario where I think Sunny couldn't come clutch. And then Blitzone, Snorlax coming huge with that 5 kill haul, taking down two different squads, ended up in 6. Uh, again, Real Rati, zero kills. I uh, don't know what kind of strat that was. This, this is a team that can so take they, down. So they actually chose to stay away from yeah. the fight and they found out, hey, we're in the circle at the edge. Let's not go look for things. But given their position in the leaderboard, without kills, it's not going to turn yeah, around. But the yeah. thing is, it's like, say, kind of ra- ran him over with a snowmobile. <laughs> I mean, with a jet ski. <laughs> I, I, I never thought that was possible. I, right? I think, I think there's going to be some harsh words exchanged. <laughs> I, I think there was team. already some harsh words <laughs> exchanged before yeah. even this match Cons- started. Considering that, you know, they, they, they're a team that can kill. Here's like the thing, you know, yeah. they missed Sate last match. He wasn't there. He yeah. came back. He's like, all right, I'm here. Let's get a card at all done now. And they're let's, back to let's, three members. Let's just leave them at three members regardless of me being. It's, yeah. it's 
quite hilarious. But then, you know, Hydra Flick doing well, uh, got a good amount of kills there. Mm. I think that's 11 kills on Hydra yep. Flick, folks. Yeah. Uh, Sick uh, Warrior squad, four kills, but I think the second, position's going to really yeah, help. Yeah, Captain Pons, I mean, he played Roy this time. I think they, they role swapped and then he yeah. did what Roy did last game. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, you know, they, the point is in... RPs isn't in such a lead that you know it's going to demotivate the rest of them. Let's actually quickly uh, turn over to the scoreboard prior from, to this yeah, match and give you an idea of what the change is going to be. Look at RPs, look at Sick Warrior, right? Sick Warrior is going to get a big 150, 100, 180 point push, yeah. right? He has also crossed Danny S, right? 180 points puts him at yeah. 1030. So I think Danny S is going to move to third? Third, possibly fourth. LXG2 actually And Hydro Flick low. is yeah. actually going to move to like third place because they have 680 and a third place with some more. I think so Rotti Hydro and Hydro Flick fourth. are going to move up. Danny is going to hold on to third. We didn't see where Google X got. Uh, I think Google X got is going to move below Cosmic as well. Yeah, Cosmic, Cosmic fell a little bit. Yeah. We're going to see a big shuffle here in the top seven, top eight because uh, three of them finished bottom four. Yep. Right, and that is hugely disappointing, and that's the kind of uh, you know interesting things that Sunhawk does to teams <laughs> because they just like forget how to play yeah. because most people don't account for how fast and how unpredictable Sunhawk can be, how the circle speeds are not your regular circle speeds, um, and they think they approach it like any other map, but the terrain coupled with the weapon drop rates uh, is going to be something that is so different from your regular maps. That a lot of these, uh, you know, well-performing teams always just underperform on Sunhawk. And uh, the thing is, I got uh, a chance to talk to uh, Axelin from, in fact, uh, Team Arps, and uh, he was telling me, "Hey, uh, we've been all busy with work. We haven't really gotten <laughs> much time to practice." And this conversation happened on Tuesday, and he's like. From today onwards, my entire squad, we're all going to sit down and we're going to try hard, grind our way to preparing for this week number two. And I think that preparation just paid off. Absolutely. And you know, that's what Dell Futures has done great. It's set an amazing base for uh, PUBG esports in India because yeah. unlike all the other events, this is a prolonged event. Over two weeks, teams yeah. have time to go back, learn, readjust their game plans and give it another go. And we've seen so much of that come into play here on day three of the Dell Futures Community Cup, especially the cafe teams. They did well first time round, but second map we saw all, yeah. all of the top performers just get just outplayed out. by the fringe teams. I think Jose. the top five except for Ops and uh, Sick. Sick Warrior, yeah. the rest of them just you know ended up in the bottom of the scoreboard. So and let's see how the score shifts because there's one more day remaining and mm -hmm. there's two maps and it's, it's Miramar. Gonna be exciting, yeah. and, uh, and Miramar is so sketchy, you know, the terrains the like we spoke about fights, it last cars, time, right? Yeah. The long range fights, the those I think th that map last week had the most explosion, like vehicle explosion yeah. kills either, because people rotating in late get shut down, you know, people who rotated early don't realize that there's there's another cliff higher than where you're sitting. Yeah. And it's it's crazy, man, that map. But uh, there are a few teams, again, like Ops, the Sick Warrior, they, they have it on lockdown, that, uh, Miramar. And again, I, I, it's it's scary to say it's going to come down to Sanok, but it is, because uh, that's where it's at. Because if, if Ops comes comes back with like one chicken dinner tomorrow, I think he's good. Uh, I, he's going to take the whole thing. Yeah, it, it all depends on what the others around him also perform, right? Because yeah. we saw one bad performance. And Danny has just lost five maps worth of lead. Yeah, literally, yeah. he was in the yeah. lead for five maps. He's not then. finished outside the top four in five maps. And then, and then, then one seventeenth position, bam, it's almost as yeah. if he did nothing. And his squad is going to be feeling pretty bummed out about that. But great job by Arps and Co. as they're going to be taking the lead. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram for score updates in just a few minutes. And of course, highlights throughout the day, folks. We're going to be back tomorrow for the final day of the Dell Futurist Community Cup as the best cafe teams and streamers from around India compete for the ultimate prize. And of course, that coveted mentoring session with one of the true professionals of esports in India, Team Brutality. Yeah. So that's going to be a huge prize for the winners. What a great platform Dell Futures has created and what amazing plays we're being treated to. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon with the final two maps, Miramar followed by Sanhok. You can catch the broadcast here live or you can follow your favorite streamers for their POV as well. I'm Captain Arya. Thank you so much for joining us. Big thank you to my co-casters, Kiran Shades, Leonun Jibayal, and Nikhil SK Brutality. We'll see you all tomorrow.